folks and welcome to the hillbilly kitchen today we're going to be making old-fashioned corn pudding now to make corn pudding you've got to have some corn and you can use just about any kind of corn you want if you're using fresh corn you're going to cut it off the cob and we're going to want to get about three and a half or four cups so we got to have a little more than what i have here uh, if you're using canned corn in it, you want one regular can of cream style and one regular can of whole kernel. And you're going to drain the whole kernel corn and uh, you'll use the cream style just like it comes out of the can and mix those two together. If you want to use frozen corn in it, you're probably going to need about 24 ounces and you're going to want to put half of that in a food processor and chop it up or just chop it up with a butcher knife because you have to get some of the juice out of the corn in your corn pudding. So that's how much corn you need. You're gonna want four eggs and a cup of milk. Now you can use any milk in it, but the thicker and richer your milk is, the thicker and richer your corn pudding is gonna be. And all of the older recipes for corn pudding call for cream. But you can use regular milk, um, all the way down to skim milk, just whatever you have. You want uh, four tablespoons of butter, quarter of a cup, about half a stick. You need something to thicken it with. Now you can use three tablespoons of flour, three or four tablespoons of flour. I've got three tablespoons of cornstarch here. And I chose cornstarch because cornstarch is gluten free and so many people have trouble with gluten allergies. Normally you make corn pudding for um, Thanksgiving or Christmas. It's, it is kind of a holiday side dish and you have a lot of people with a lot of different dietary restrictions. So if you use the cornstarch, you don't have to worry about the people with gluten allergies. So three tablespoons of cornstarch and depending on your corn, you're going to want two to four tablespoons of sugar and also kind of depending on the taste of the people that you're making it for. Corn pudding is a side dish, it's not really a dessert. But um, like I said, it just depends. Anywhere from two to four tablespoons, adjust it to suit your taste. And all of the older recipes and my granny's recipe had a tablespoon of baking powder in them. Now the baking powder is gonna make it, it's gonna change the texture just a little bit. You don't have to put it in there but it is going to make it rise up a little bit more and it's going to make it a little more fluffy. And you need a little salt in it, um, about half a teaspoon. You can adjust that up or down to suit your taste, but you got to keep in mind you got all these eggs and the corn in it. And that's all you need in it. Now, if you're using fresh corn, you just want to cut it off the cob. Um, you can get a gadget that will do this. It has a spring on it and it puts pressure it just slides right down the cob and takes it all off a lot of people commented on the corn fritters and said you know you can stand the end of it up in a bunk pan and cut it off and that is a very good way to cut it off it kind of keeps it all together i'm really kind of using a bowl so you can more see what i'm doing try not to cut into the cob but you want to get all the corn off And it doesn't really matter if you use um, white corn, yellow corn, or um, a mix. The peaches and cream is really, really good. And I've got um, one ear of mixed over here, but corn's kind of not in season here already. Normally we would be getting in a late crop of corn, but we've had this big heat wave and drought and it's kind of killed all late corn. It killed all late everything. But once you get it all cut off, you want to scrape the cob really, really good. And that's important. Um, if you're using the cream corn, of course, that's going to give you plenty of juice, the canned corn. But if you're using fresh corn, make sure you get all that juice out of there. And that's also going to make your corn pudding um, a little sweeter because that corn juice that's up close to the cob is usually very sweet, especially if your corn's fresh. Okay, now let's see how much that gave us. Oh yeah, that's plenty. 
I said just about three or four cups, three and a half, four cups, somewhere in there. That's right at three and a half cups. That's plenty. Okay, we're going to start by beating our eggs up here a little bit. And we will add in our cream or milk. Like I said, you can make it with whatever you have, but all the older recipes do call for cream and the cream is going to make it much richer. Now, when you're mixing up this baking soda, um, it's going to tend to clump if you just dump it right in the bowl. And I should have had out a bigger bowl, but I'm going to kind of mix the baking powder and the um, cornstarch and sugar together just a little bit so it doesn't clump quite so bad, and it probably still will. Now that's good. Go ahead and add in your butter. You do want to melt the butter so that it mixes in even. And your salt. And like I said, you can adjust that up or down, but you're going to need about half a teaspoon for sure because you've got a lot of corn and you've got a lot of eggs in this. This is really not hard to mix up at all. And once you've got that kind of combined, just dump your corn in whether you're using your fresh or your cans or whatever. If you're using the cans though, don't forget to drain your whole kernel. It will make it watery and runny and it'll probably never set up. And that is all that goes in it. Uh, I've got, I think this is like a eight by 11 casserole dish. It's just a kind of standard casserole dish. Uh, you could probably even use one of the bigger square ones or whatever you've got. It is a good idea to spray it with something nonstick or wipe a little oil in it. Corn kind of tends to come out in a lump, so once you get it dumped out, just use your whisk or your spoon or whatever you're stirring it with and kind of bust it up and spread it around a little bit. Okay, now we take this to the oven. Now you want to bake this in a 350 degree oven until it is set and browned slightly. Um, it's probably going to take 45 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, um, up to an hour. So anywhere between 45 minutes and an hour. And it's going to depend, a, a lot of how long it takes is going to depend on how much liquid is in it. The different kinds of corn have more or less liquid in them and that's going to affect the baking time. But this will take well, about 45 minutes. Set your timer for 45 minutes, keep an eye on it. And when it's done, It will look like this. Now, it'll be slightly brown just like this and the top will be cracking a little bit. Um, we put the baking powder in there and it did rise up a little bit but not too much. And like I said that's you can put it in or you can leave it out but all of the older recipes have the baking powder in them. If you research it anything you know that your granny had or if you have an old cook church cookbook or something like that. They all have the baking powder in them. I think maybe leaving it out was one of those things. You've, you've all known those ladies. You'll ask them for their favorite recipe, something they make that they make better than everybody else, and they'll give it to you, and they leave out one ingredient. And I think that's how the corn pudding with no baking powder ended up. Is somebody passed that recipe down and they left out the baking powder so that their corn pudding would be best. If you're looking for some of the stuff for a traditional Thanksgiving dinner, uh, maybe, I don't know how old this recipe is, it's several hundred years old. 
I'm not sure they had this at the first Thanksgiving necessarily, but they have definitely had it for a very, very long time, uh, a couple hundred years anyway. So if you want a more traditional Thanksgiving dinner, try this as a side instead of just a bowl of corn. And this is all some, you know, all these casseroles and stuff, the dressing and everything, all those can really be made up ahead of time for your big Thanksgiving dinner. Or at least you can get them ready ahead of time and then bake them all right before dinner. Well, this is our first Thanksgiving video of the season. Um, some of our U.S. viewers might be thinking she's a little early on that, but in Canada, our viewers celebrate Thanksgiving in mid-October, which actually makes more sense in late November because it is a harvest celebration and we harvest in mid-October. But since this is our first Thanksgiving video of the season, I don't want to leave you just yet. I want to share a couple things with you. First, I want to tell you that making corn pudding with fresh corn and cream is definitely worth the extra effort and the extra expense. The difference between the stuff with fresh corn and cream and the stuff with canned corn and milk is truly like the difference between night and day. So if you want to make something special for the people who you love that they are really going to enjoy, take the extra effort and do the fresh corn and the cream. The other thing that I want to share with you is hope. Uh, the holiday season seems to be a time when um, many people find life particularly hopeless. And if they are already in a desperate situation, it seems like it gets more desperate. Well, it, there is hope no matter what your situation is. And anyone who is saved can tell you that God found them in a very hopeless, desperate place. And I think the reason why most of us have that in common in our story is because you have to know that you need to be saved in order to be saved. No one needs to be saved from a perfect life. God finds us at a point in our life where we are hopeless or we are desperate. And that's when we find Him. And uh, if you are in a desperate situation this holiday season, I truly hope that before the end of the year, you know what true hope is. And uh, I want to share with you a little story that maybe will help you find that. And I hope my dad does not mind me sharing this. Um, he's about to be 80 years old and he called me back about three or four months ago and he said, I'm saved. I know without a shadow of a doubt, when I die, I'm going to heaven and my sins have been forgiven and Jesus is my Lord. Now, my reaction is not Maybe what it should have been. I was totally speechless when he told me that. But if you knew the entire history of the past 30 years, which my father does, <clears throat> so I'm sure he understands my reaction, I was just speechless when he told me that. Now, I am overjoyed that he told me that, and uh, it was quite shocking, though. But I remember about 20 years ago, my mother was in the hospital and my father was um, feeling rather hopeless and I shared my faith with him of course and I told him that I was praying for her and I was praying for him and he said people like you have something that I just don't understand now what he was talking about is faith and Hebrews defines faith as the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The whole world, if you are saved, can see your faith. Jesus said we're to be a light unto the world, and he was the light unto the world when he was here. It's through our faith that other people see the light that they see the hope that they can find God. So 
If you're saved, please don't hesitate to share your faith anytime you have the opportunity. Take the time, take a few minutes. Maybe it's just in showing a simple act of love to someone or kindness, but share your faith. And if you are in that, one of those situations where you are hopeless and it's getting worse because the pressure of everything that's expected to you or expected of you around the holiday season is pressing down on you. You have to buy gifts for your kids or your family, or maybe you're expected to travel and it's just like everything is crushing in on you because you have to give more than normal and you already don't feel like you have anything to give. Find someone who you know, and I'm sure you know someone who you can see that something in, who you can see their faith and talk to them and let them share Jesus with you. Let them show you how you can be filled with that hope. And the very last thing I want to leave you with is Romans 15, 13. It says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy of peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. It is my prayer that before the end of this year, that every single person who hears this video understands that verse. And understands the joy of living in hope and peace. Thank you so very much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. We do appreciate every single one of you and we thank God for all of you every day. You have blessed us beyond what words can say. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.